Yes, what is happening to my life? Listen, every time my daughter watches my videos, she says the same thing. She says, Mom, you look so creepy just staring at the camera at the beginning of the videos. So what do I do? She said, make a funky pose. <laughs> so Lily, baby doll, that's for you. Mwah. Mama loves you, the funky pose. <laughs> Thank you for watching my channel. Welcome back. I am Narima. Um, to all my old subscribers, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. To the new ones, I hope you love it. I hope you love what you see and I hope you subscribe. Anyway, before I start today's dish, I have maybe a one minute babble. I need to say thank you to Dan for the beautiful banner he put on my, on my channel. I am no good with technology and I got up one morning and in my email, there was this amazing banner that says Caribbean Queen Chef. Dan, mwah, thank you so much, I love it. Also, I have to tell you a really short story. I was at Costco this weekend, and I saw this really beautiful lady staring at me, and suddenly she taps my shoulder. And I turn around, and she says, excuse me, are you Narima? And I'm like, yes, I'm Narima. And she says, I watch your YouTube channel, and I love it. I was like, mind blown. You guys, somebody recognized me. That is like crazy. I thank you so much, Jen, for watching. Thank you so much for commenting. It means the world to me. I know I've said it before, I'm barely nothing in YouTube world, but if I can make a little impact on someone, oh my goodness, that means the world to me. So thank you so much. Now, that was my one minute babble. That was more than a minute, but math has never been my strong point. <laughs> so today for the video, oh, now that I'm on the video thing, listen, you guys, I am a cook, I am a chef, this is what I do. I don't know how to manage the camera very well yet, so apologies for the angles of the camera. Just remember, focus on the food and focus on my eyes, okay? Everything else that's in the middle, I'm sorry. Uh, someday the universe will bless me with a team and I don't have to worry about that. I am just totally focused on food and you should be too. So here we go. Today's dish, amazing dish, spans generations. It's called arroz con pollo. All of you know, or most of you, my parents are from India, but I was born and raised in Puerto Rico. And this dish is typical to the island holds a very special place in my heart. I have lived in so many places. I've got a plaque on the wall that says, and I put it up in the back, it says, I have left my heart in so many places. From Puerto Rico, I moved to Florida. From Florida, Texas. From Texas, Leesburg, Virginia, which is Northern Virginia. And from Virginia, I made it um, all the way to California. So, this dish has traveled with me all along. This and my Tres Leches recipe. So it holds very special meaning. When I was in Virginia, I was doing cooking classes at home. I had a beautiful setup at home and one of the first dishes that we made was arroz con pollo. And I know you guys still remember that dish. Those are you that are watching me from Virginia. Delicious dish. So now here I am to share it with the world with so much love and passion as usual. And um, let's start. Again, do not worry about the exact ingredients that's, that are going into the pot or the mix. Everything you need is gonna be in the description box. Also, my video is done in real time, which means there's not a lot of editing going around. So please feel free to boop, 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 just fast forward through my babble or whatever you don't wanna hear or see. Let's begin. This um, dish has a couple of different steps. So let's start with number one, which is making the chicken. I'm gonna tilt the camera down. Remember, food down here. <laughs> okay, so for arroz con pollo, arroz of course means rice, pollo is chicken. So of course we're gonna start with chicken. For the chicken, you can use any type of chicken you like. I am using bone-in thighs with skin. I leave the skin on in the cooking process because it releases this amazing juice, this fatty juice 
that gives so much flavor to the dish. It's completely up to you if you wanna just use chicken breast. Um, you can use a whole chicken and cut it up, but again, I am going to use the thighs bone in. Later on, I might take the bone out before serving it to my children, etc. But for to make the dish, I will do it. Okie doke. I will leave it in. So let's start, let's turn this pot on. Oh, and let me show you one thing over here. This is a beautiful thing. Look at my stove. See that? One pot. As often as I can, I will make everything in one pot. Clean up, minimal. That's all you need. So, chicken. We always start, I turn the pot on, um, medium, low, medium. Let's do it in medium so the oil can be nice and hot. While that heats up, we're gonna season the chicken. So we've got handy dandy adobo. And adobo is just a mix of different spices. Instead of putting, getting everything separately, it's everything in one little container, which is amazing. So make sure all your chicken is seasoned. Since we're using the same pot, all the flavors that are left behind in the pot are gonna incorporate into this arroz con pollo. And that's what you're looking for. That's why the season, this, the chicken needs to be well seasoned. Garlic powder. Black pepper. And I will add one Sazon Goya for color. Gives it this beautiful orangey, yellowy color that the arroz con pollo is famous for. See how much color one little packet gives? One packet is more than enough, as long as you mix it around. There, that looks beautifully mixed. Now, to go in our pot, I like to put it skin down first. It's nice and crispy. All the juices come out of that skin. See that? Try to get all of that chicken in there. Skin down. We're gonna fry this up until it's well done because we're not gonna use it till the end. So it needs to be well done. So, I will leave this here. And while this cooks, I'm gonna come back and flip it around. Second step, we are going to make what's called sofrito. Now, sofrito, let me walk you over here and show you what's needed. Sofrito is the base of every Puerto Rican dish. And it's like this beautiful, delicious, amazing paste. That's the base, you put it in first, and this gives that dish this amazing flavor. 
So you're lucky because this video that you're watching, it's got two parts. I'm gonna show you to make the entire arroz con pollo. And this could be a separate video, but I'm giving it to you in one video. You're gonna make sofrito. So, ingredients for sofrito. Here we go. I'm gonna lay it out here for you. We've got, of course, cilantro. We've got one large onion. And we've got two bell peppers. What colors you want to use, that's up to you. To me, they all taste the same. Some people say they have different flavors. Honestly, I, I don't taste the difference. And a whole bunch of garlic. Now remember, do not worry exactly about how much I've got here. I will leave you the instructions. So, we're going to start blending this in our food processor. First thing we'll take is cilantro, and you're gonna use the whole entire bunch. What I like to do is just cut the bottom off. I don't like to eat, think that I'm eating the stem. Try to get as much as the leafy part as possible, and the rest can just go away. Just dump that in our food processor. Take our bell pepper. And now we're just gonna roughly chop this because it's all gonna get blended out in the food processor. Take the middle out. because I hate to waste, I also cut the top. If you want to cut it a little bit smaller, you can just to aid in the process. Dump this right in. Same thing with the yellow. Now there's one ingredient that I'm missing and it's called culantro. Culantro is another leafy green like cilantro but it has a different flavor of cilantro, very strong flavor. Now, it's very hard for me to find culantro here in California for some reason. Um, I'm sure maybe you guys can find it somewhere. If you do find it, just feel free to add it into this mix. And you see how I added an entire bunch of cilantro? With culantro, you just want to add about a quarter of the bunch. The flavor is so strong. So just a quarter of the bunch will be enough. And I smell my chicken, so I'm gonna have to just run over there and give it a quick flip. Remember, all of this I'm doing in real time. Give me 10 seconds. Smells and looks delicious. Next, we've got our onion. And again, rough chop. No need to get too technical with the onion.
And if you're an onion lover like me, you can put as much onion in it as you like. And garlic. Can't go wrong with that. And we've got our garlic, which what I love to do is just give it a quick pound before I put it in, again, just to aid in the mixing. So how about we just do that here? Ooh, got to run away. That's the mix. So now we are just going to, maybe I can pull this closer, blend all of this goodness together. I add a little bit of water. Close it up. There we go. Amazing. Oh my God, this is so good. I'm gonna bring this camera close to me. Here's my little assistant. Here's Kingston. Say hi, King. Hi, King. Hi, Papa. So. Can you see that? Look at that. That is the most amazing sofrito you will ever have. Fresh ingredients. That's the secret to amazing cooking. Everything fresh. And look how easy that was. Okie doke. So we're gonna leave this here until we're ready to use. And one thing, after you use it, this is freezeable. So put it in the freezer or put it all the way back in your fridge. And you can use this basically for anything. Any kind of Puerto Rican cooking or Caribbean cooking, just add a little bit. The flavor is gonna be ridiculous. Let's go back to our chicken. And check this out. How beautiful does that look? Flip it over again. Gonna give this little container a quick run. And cover this up. And let this cook for the remainder of the time. Maybe another 15 minutes or so till it's fully cooked. In the meantime, let's do the next step. So continuing, I left the chicken cooking, which is right here. And all I did till I realized that the video had cut was I started chopping. You didn't miss much. I started chopping uh, bell peppers, onions, the exact same ingredients that we put into the sofrito. It's what I'm chopping. So bell peppers, onions, I've got some fresh pound garlic in here, and now I'm just gonna chop the cilantro while the chicken's cooking. It's still not done. This is crazy. That, it just cut off. Okie doke. So, let's continue. 
cilantro. I've got another bunch of cilantro, and here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use about half of it to start, half of the bunch, and I'm going to reserve that other half for later. And again, I'm going to chop the bottom off. I don't like stems. And just chop it up. Now, let's take a peek at the chicken. We've got the stuff that's gonna go in here after the chicken's done. So let's take a quick peek at our chicken, see how it's doing. I think it almost should be done. Mm, 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 mm. That looks amazing. Just getting a bowl. Yep, this is ready to go, you guys. Do you see the beautiful color that the um, Sasson Goya adds to the chicken? Not just color, but flavor, but I really love the color. It's hard to get color on chicken unless you're burning it. And this is not burned at all. So we are going to take this out and reserve the chicken for later towards the end of the dish. And this took what, maybe about 20 minutes to fully cook. I always use chicken that's room temperature. Do not use it frozen, do not use it cold because it'll take you longer. And it doesn't cook evenly. Okie doke. I am just going to put this away in the oven for now. Okay, so we've got this pot with all this delicious chicken leftovers. See that? That's going to be amazing for the dish. Now, this is where we are going to use a sofrito. But first, we are going to add what I like to call our chunky sofrito. Everything that we chopped up, bell peppers, onions, and cilantro goes into the pot. And we're just gonna let this cook on medium, maybe two minutes. Beautiful. Give this a quick twirl. Now, I'm going to let this cook down, maybe two minutes on medium, cover the pot, and it'll be nice and soft. And here we go. About two minutes later, that's nice and cooked down. By cooked down, I mean it's soft. All the flavors are released. It's at this point that I like to add my garlic. And I didn't add it before. I just don't like to take a chance that it'll burn down on the bottom. And burnt garlic does not taste amazing. So we'll take all of our garlic out. Dump it in here.
give this a quick twirl. Everything's incorporated. Now, we shall take our tomato paste. Add that in. I like to break down the tomato paste a little. Just to help mix it up a little quicker. this by yourself. Just like this. It's amazing. Okay, now that we have everything incorporated, how beautiful is that? Now it's the time to add the rice. Let me tell you something about this rice. I am using a medium grain rice. Medium grain, it's a little bit thicker. It cooks better. Um, if you cannot find medium grain, you know, just use parboil. I'd rather use parboil than long grain. The long grain just breaks up immediately. But please do try to find the medium grain. You can find it in the um, international aisle in any market, any supermarket. So at this point, we add our rice. And my stove, it's still on medium. You see how it's bubbling up? So I add the rice as it's bubbling up. Once I add the rice, I will tune this down to low. Then I will add, here's a sofrito. This is a sofrito we just made. I just put it into a little cup. And yes, I add a lot because I love flavor. So all my flavor does not come from salt and pepper and stuff. It just comes from this amazing seasoning. Of course, we're gonna add salt, but the main flavor, comes from this, all this freshness. Got that. I'm going to add my Sazon Goya for that beautiful yellowy orange color. And let me show you something. We are going to use chicken stock. Now, you can use store-bought chicken stock, no problem. But I make my chicken stock at home and I keep it in this little container in the freezer. And this gives this food, or any food, like the most ridiculous flavor. Try it, make it, you will love it. And all it is, it's chicken, I boil the chicken, I add whatever vegetables I can find at the time, it's always different vegetables. Um, but it's always chicken, it's always cilantro, it's always garlic, and I happen to have some celery, so I added it in there. I had bell peppers, I added it in there. If I had carrots, I would add it in there and just let it boil. Let it boil, 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 and that's your chicken stock. And then the chicken you can use for another dish. So, I am going to add chicken stock, but first I need a spoon. Mix it up. Mm 
You guys are not gonna believe how amazing, if you follow these instructions, you're not gonna believe how amazing this dish is. And Thanksgiving is so close by, you can make this. You can totally make this for something different. Add it straight into the pot. Give this a twirl. Let's see where we at where we're at water-wise. Look at that. water so I'm going to add just a little bit tiny of water in here perfection to this I'm going to add a little bit of salt And believe it or not, guess what I'm gonna add? If you've watched my videos before, you know I have a special relationship with Mr. Bacardi. <laughs> and he would be very upset if I don't add him to my dishes when I can. So I'm taking half a shot of Bacardi and just tossing that in there. Why? Because I love it. The flavor bursts in your mouth. You're gonna be like, what is happening here? If you don't want to add it, don't add it, but why wouldn't you? The alcohol dissipates as it cooks, and all that's left is the, oh, flavor of Bacardi. Everybody loves Bacardi. I use dark rum. That's dark Bacardi. I'm gonna give this a twirl. Make sure everything's in. And you know what I do? I always taste my food just to make sure that the seasonings are on point. Sometimes I'll need a little bit more garlic, a little bit black pepper, a little bit of salt. Mmm. And this needs a little bit more salt, but it's amazing. Mm -hmm -hmm. That's it. Give it one more twirl. And we are going to leave this to sit for 20 minutes. And when I come back, you will see how amazing it turns out. So this sits 20 minutes, look at it all beautiful, 20 minutes on low, covered. Do not open the cover for at least 20 minutes. Then at 20 minutes, we'll assess and see if it needs a couple more minutes. So here we go. And we'll be back. And then we'll be into our final steps. Smells amazing. Mm-mm-mm. going to be a little bit stuck on the bottom. So you just take it off easily. And believe it or not, the bottom of the pot, the sticky part, that is the most delicious part. In Puerto Rico, they call it pegao. And pegao just means sticky. So all the flavor sticks to the bottom with this rice. Oh my goodness, it is so good. So this has about, I would say about 10 more minutes to go. Because you can always tell because the rice is not fully cooked. But it's at this point that I like to add the chicken. And remember we saved half a bunch of cilantro? This is when it goes in. 
And why does it go in at this point? Because with fresh herbs, if you put it in in the beginning, almost all the flavor dissipates. I mean, it's, it's in the food, but it's not as strong as I like it to be. So I save half a bunch, I put it in in the last 10 minutes, and you've got this amazing flavor that's still there, that's very potent. So first thing, we add the chicken. Well, you know what, let me add the cilantro first. So let's go over here, because if I add the chicken and then the cilantro, the chicken's gonna be all broken up and I don't want that. So cut off the stems. No bueno. And just a rough chop on the cilantro. Careful at the ends with your fingers. Take this over here. Give that a nice twirl. And you know what? If you have olives in your fridge, which it was my mistake, I didn't have them, you can add them into the rice also. Just wanted to let you know that. And now we're gonna add in our chicken and let it cook down for another 10 minutes. See that? That looks incredible already. Just needs a couple more minutes. It's going to accommodate chicken in here. Make sure they all fit. I'm going to close this up for another 10 minutes and we'll be back. Last we left off, it was cooking for, the, for 10 more minutes and we're gonna open it up and see what it looks like and plate it and we're good to go. Here we go. Oh my goodness, that looks amazing, you guys. Get this a little bit closer. That is a beautiful dish. Now all I'm going to do is plate it and you'll see the end product. I like to take the rice from the bottom, like I said, because that's where a lot of the flavor goes to. Big 
big beautiful piece of chicken. This over here. Garnish ready to go. And I always like to add a touch of lime because I love the flavor of the cilantro and the lime. This is optional, you don't have to. It's just how I like to serve it. Lime on the side. And here you go. Arroz con pollo. Arroz con pollo de Puerto Rico. Porque Puerto Rico lo hace mejor. Puerto Rico does it better. It really does.